afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Mike McKim. I'm the Vice President of Operations at Creative Realities. And we're here, and we're the company bringing this product solution to market. And of course, hoping to help the reopening process across the country in getting people back to work, stores, and venues with confidence that it's safe to do so. Which is the point of this webinar, which will run about 20 minutes. We'll include a demonstration of the thermal temperature inspection device and then a view of our cloud-based software dashboard. After that, we'll open it up to a Q&A. A few quick ground rules before we begin. I will be sharing my screen for the discussion. We ask that you leave your cameras off and keep yourselves on mute. At the bottom center of your interface, you'll see a Q&A icon for you to submit questions, and we ask that you use that method versus putting questions in the chat. Questions will be anonymized. We will get through as many questions as possible at the end of the session. We'll read them out loud and we'll answer them for the group. If at any point you need to jump off or you wish to come back and re-listen, this session will be recorded and available on demand at CRI.com. Let's get started. With me today is Rick Mills, the CEO of Creative Realities. Rick. Thanks folks, appreciate it. Welcome to the CRI webinar. <clears throat> we also have Darren with us who uh, coordinates a lot of the reseller uh, and uh, end user stuff. So thanks. With that, Mike, let's go to the first screen. Okay, Look, what I thought I'd do is open up with two or three uh, slides about creative realities. So kind of give you a sense for who we are. We are a digital marketing firm based out of Louisville, Kentucky. We help clients use the latest technologies to create better customer experiences. And we ultimately do that through digital signage. This gives you a sense for our scale aligns with our client footprint across America. We have about 105 FTEs all across the US and in Canada. We are integrated into a network of 6,000 trained technicians uh, in North America and 12 countries. All those technicians are on a 1099 basis. But as you can see, we are set up for scale all across America. Some of our customers, significant verticals, Automotive, FCA is one of our largest customers. We power sales assets and sales technology in all 2,300 dealerships in North America. Uh, we have 17 of the top 50 movie theater chains under contract. Two of the largest fuel and convenience in Circle K and Shell. We also do 7-Eleven, among others. So we are built for scale all across America. And so we are the perfect partner built for scale to help America or folks get back to work. You know, and we talk about the new normal, uh, and boy, that's, that's up for interpretation today. What is the new normal? Our safe space platform helps people return to work safely and with confidence. And that's really what it's all about today helping our employees get back to work in our facilities and buildings. That we introduced the thermal mirror. The thermal mirror is a non-contact fever inspection kiosk. It is built for enterprise and scale. It's relatively quick. It takes about one second to align it and take your temperature. You're typically 18 to 24 inches away from the device. It is at very accurate. It's accurate within 0.9 degrees or 9 tenths uh, Fahrenheit, and which, by the way, meets the FDA recommendation. Works with or without a mask. It has facial recognition software and features built into it. We ship it out of here config and ready to go immediately. The use cases, 
I think are virtually unlimited. They're all across America. So you have a number of use cases today. The solution, it really conveys that space is safe to enter and dwell. And we recommend three things. Number one, implement checks. Leverage the thermal mirror to automate testing and logging of results. That's really important. Number two, communicate and display your company's new policies around safe place and what that might be. Uh, number three, display the results and you create confidence throughout your employee base by showing those results. We also have an option where you can uh, hook a thermal printer up to a little tiny printer and it prints a sticker. You put that sticker right on your chest. Think about before when you would vote or you give blood, think about the concept. You wore that sticker with a little bit of pride. So imagine in your facility today, you have 40, 50, 80, 100 people on the floor and they're all walking around with the same green sticker that says, hey, I tested A-OK -okay for temperature today. Builds confidence. No one of these individual items will build confidence. It's the holistic approach to doing all of them that creates a sense of well-being and confidence among your employees. We highly recommend an adjacent digital signage screen with it. We've, we've uh, partnered with our partner, Samsung. And again, the point is communicate your safe space policy. Think of the things that you and I and all the employers across America have changed since the start of this COVID-19 event. For example, I suspect you have a much different cleaning regimen than you used to before. Do you have a mask policy or not? Does, did your state or does your state require temperature taking or not? Do you have a social distancing order in place from your local government or not? So a number of things need to be communicated. We highly recommend this as the right approach to doing that. This gives you a sense of what the thermal mirror device looks like. First and foremost, there are four technology stacks within this device. By the way, let me be clear, nothing here is really totally revolutionary or brand new in terms of the technology that is inside the device. What is revolutionary and brand new, it's the first time all four of these tech, tech stacks or technology pieces have been brought together in this form factor and in this price point. The first tech stack is on top. It's a thermal mirror, or excuse me, thermal mirror. It's an infrared camera for heat. <clears throat> Comes out of Germany. The second tech stack in this is what they call binocular or stereo cameras, and that's for facial recognition. Just like many of you have today in your iPhone or your Android powered phone where you've got your facial security turned on. It's the exact same technology. The third tech stack in here is the actual Android tablet itself. And it's all of its on this call No, There's several billion of those roaming the planet. So Android tablets have been around, they're tried and true. The fourth is the Android operating system that powers this device. Again, it runs billions of devices around the world. We have modified this Android operating system. We created hooks, which allows it to take all the data it gathers and sends it up to our cloud. So those are the four tech stacks in the device. We have a partner. Our partner in this venture is a company called In Reality. There's the suppliers of the software cloud. That software cloud has been used in use for several years 
and today powers and manages tens of thousands of devices all across the world today. You have customizable settings that allow for any combination of the following. Displays captures multiple attributes. Temperature, whether it's a known or unknown person, a photo, with or without a mask, or not. Once it captures the data, you can also create a notification event. Mike McKim comes into the office this morning, takes his temperature at 917. Mike has 102 temperature. The device can be set up to email Mike's boss immediately. It is networkable. It supports multiple entrances and test stations throughout a building. All data is aggregated and accessible from a single dashboard. And we will show you later on, Mike, I believe we show a couple samples of the aggregated dashboard. So we'll show you that. There you go. This is the dashboard view. It shows 90 scan, 85 pass, 5 failed, average temperature of pass, average temperature fail. The daily number of screenings, by day, by shift, number of anonymous, or excuse me, what, what you call guest entrances, guest entrances by folks coming in, they're either a guest or if the facial recognition is turned on, they're known. So you capture all these elements or not, that's up to you. This is a little picture of the connectivity for this particular uh, specific device. It runs on 12 volt power. So it's got a UL approved power brick that plugs right in the wall. Uh, it's also got a USB connection. It's also got a relay connection. What does that mean? Folks, we can use the relay connection to connect to any number of security gates, any number of things like that. It does come with a quad-based A17 ARM controller, and it does have Ethernet and Wi-Fi built in to connect to the cloud to aggregate data up to the cloud. Okay? And the facial detection or facial recognition is good for up to 30,000 people per building. We talked about the Android platform is highly configurable, API friendly. We've used those devices, those APIs, and we have it create an event log. It stores and forwards all of the information to the cloud, which as a byproduct creates a detailed audit compliance log. We talked about the rules engine that is used to activate something. It can activate an email, SMS notification, can turn on an alarm, I can beep, I can make it do any number of things. Our application, we can integrate this with other analytics tools like occupancy management sensors, time clocks, security, a number of things like that. This solution also has complete remote device management. When it's hooked up to the cloud, the team from created our CRI NOC personnel can manage the device remotely. This is a couple pictures, should you a sense of mounted on a desk, the actual pole mount that's there, or you can mount it on a turnstile where it does gate activation, really any number of these things. Finally, this is some information on our AWS cloud support services. Um, our, our cloud is on AWS here in the United States, happens to be in what's called the East Lake server farm. All the data is 256-bit encrypted, and it also, from the communication between the device and the cloud, that uses SSL secure tunnel authentication, uses TLS version 1.2. So very secure in its connectivity as it transitions the data to the cloud. So 
<clears throat> Let's talk about lead time for this device too, just to be clear. Many of the competitors out in the market today say they have a product that is, quote, offers the same feature functionality as ours. Got it. We have thousands available immediately and can ship literally within 24 hours of receiving an order. None of our competitors can do that. Number two, every one of our competitors talks about the features their cloud is going to have when it's released. Our cloud is released, it is available today, it is working today, it has been working for several years, and today is powering tens of thousands of devices. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over, we'll turn the camera back on, uh, and we're gonna go to Mike McKim to do a little bit of a software demo and actually physically show the device. Thanks, Rick. Give me one moment as I switch gears on the display. Um, so there's the device uh, in the upper corner of your screen. Uh, and that shows the device mounted on a Purell hand sanitizer station. And Darren, if you would walk around and show people just how quick that it looks like. Normal temperature. That's it. Normal temperature. Thanks, Darren. Mm -hmm. And then, Mike, you're currently showing the dashboard. I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm going to do a, just change it through this week. Um, so looking at one of our devices in our lobby, we've had 12 people go through for screenings. So just as an example of some of the things that we track, and then we're displaying for people is total screenings, looking at a daily total, since it's just two days, there's just two data points there. But being able to look, uh, if you had five days in the week, I can select a longer period, and looking at how people are coming in the building, all four data points. Um, I also want to take a look, one of the first questions that people often ask is, what kind of device access do I have as part of the dashboard? You have an ability to see the devices at your location and their current status. So don't be alarmed, this is actually a test device, so it's okay that it's offline, but these are the three devices in our corporate office. All three are online and currently pegging data uh, to the system, uh, to, to the cloud uh, in real time. So it just gives you some level of comfort is, if you're looking at troubleshooting, when do I need to call the knock? Call the knock if that says offline, and our, our call center would immediately help you engage uh, to take a look at that. And so as we, the second piece that we oftentimes then beyond looking at some statistical data and, and, and who's coming through and information about that is about employees. And so when we talk about the employee management, it's about typically photographs. You can anonymize it on several different ways. Mike 2500 just happens to be me. I did not enter my last name just for illustrative purposes. Um, you could use go all numbers or you could do initials. There's a number of ways you can still anonymize the information. And the idea is that you load a person and a picture. There's just a few data points that you need to get that person active. Uh, you, one extra uh, point that you have to make here, it's so hard to try and do things from the big screen, is you have to you put the name in, you put a picture or the employee ID, and then you have to just assign it to a location. The, our CRI, that's our corporate location. So I can now access all of the thermal mirrors that are in our corporate location. And as you saw from the quick device look, there are three devices. So all three devices have my picture and recognize me as an employee. It's that simple to set up an employee. Couple a name or number, photograph, and then where they're gonna have access to. Mike, can you explain, we recently updated the employee addition feature with some automation around that. Is that something you can explain? Thank you, Rick. That's that, absolutely. So let's say I've set up a new employee, and I'll pick on May, and, and he is, uh, we just set him up. Sorry, I get that way. I can select one or more employees, and then I can generate a token to email those employees, and then after I've generated that token, I can send May an email 
that now lets him load a photograph that it, it has a token with it that, that combines his his entry here with the photograph so that his photograph will now be available through the dashboard. All that I've done conceptually is, in theory, I'm HR, I get a list of my employees and I import them. So I've got either the names or numbers that I'm gonna use set up. I use this bulk action and I send an email out to all those individuals that I need to collect photographs from. They respond with a photograph, it loads back into the system and they are now ready to go uh, and, have their, and be part of the facial recognition. So the point, folks, is many of our competitors have a process that harvests one employee photo at a time, and you must enroll from the physical device. Ours import a CVS file, hit two buttons, it emails all 100, 200, 400 of your employees, and you'll harvest 90% of all the pictures immediately and they're already enrolled in the system so that's a significant difference between our system and many of the competitors and just one final we have a new feature that we rolled out last week that we're currently continuing to enhance and that is the ability uh, because some jurisdictions are requiring the temperatures be taken we wanted to make sure we gave an ability to print reporting uh, on who has come through a particular device on a particular day or, or a particular time period. And so this report now, it shows I came in in 25 on June 1st, I came in and I was scanned. I, I can, so I can see everybody who came through the locations here in Louisville over the time period that I've selected. So if I do have any state and local regulations that I've got to comply with, I can demonstrate compliance on having that I'm scanning employees and taking their temperatures on a regular basis. It is exportable to Excel. If you don't necessarily care for that format, you can download right into a CVS file or CSV file and pull it right into Excel and manipulate it in whatever way that you need. Great. So a couple of highlights from the dashboard, Rick. Happy to walk through them with people and dive into more detail later if someone wants to see more. Okay. With that, I'm going to pass the control back to you. All right. So I know at least it appears that we have had at least one question come in on Q&A. So let's navigate and see what uh, system is Okay. The question is, can you clarify a wording from one of the previous slides that labels your system as a non-contact fever inspection system? Okay. Clarification, it is non-contact because you don't touch it, you're 18 to 24 feet away. It is not a medical grade device, so therefore we use the term fever inspection system. That is what is recommend by, recommended by the FDA. Our device is FDA approved or FDA uh, certified. We have applied or in the process of application of a 510k authorization for this device. We expect to have that in the future. Um, so that's really why we call it a not a fever inspection system. Okay. <clears throat> Can you register the actual temperature we rather than pass fail on the activity log? The answer is yes, you can. And, and that is the default setting, actually. We added the pass-fail functionality because there were individuals that didn't want to record the digits. So we made it an option that can be turned on or off. Um, so we have a question from, did you mention you can connect a printer and print a path like a sticker? If so, does it print pass with the date? Can it print on paper that expires after 24 hours? The answer is yes, we can print on any type of picture. Yes, we have talked with customers who want to use the thermal expiration paper. Uh, so, and we have the ability, uh, we have not introduced it yet, but in the next several weeks, you will actually be able to print the person, if, it's a, if you're using facial recognition, you will be able to print the picture. It's not in there today, but it's two weeks out, I believe, Mike. A few weeks out, yes. And I'm, I'm wearing my sticker from a sample thermal print 
for my scheme today past state time. Okay. What else? What other questions? Okay, we have no more open questions. Thank you very much for joining us at this point in time. And you all, uh, well, we've got one more question just came in. How many people can be scanned at one time and how many per hour, assuming social distancing at six feet spacing? Okay, that's a great question. We, we believe it's about 450 people an hour that you should allocate five to seven seconds for each employee for scanning and appropriate social distancing. Now, that will depend specifically on what your queuing arrangement is on the layout of the lobby. For example, we have some customers who are putting this, the individual thermal stations in um, individual booths because they want it to be totally anonymous. Okay, um, so that really depends upon the the, um, the the system. Another question: What is the best way to contact you about purchase? Certainly, go to CRI online. Okay, and uh, on our in our website CRI.com, there's numerous buttons to click to get us an email directly, and we'll be happy. Someone will literally follow up in a matter of hours. We have another question that's come in. Would this work for an entry to an event like sports, concert, etc.? Great question. Our device is, is, is uh, really considered an indoor device. It requires an ambient temperature between 63 degrees Fahrenheit and 78 degrees Fahrenheit. If you put it out where the ambient temperature varies beyond that, um, our device is not the solution. We do have higher end thermal camera solutions that are available for large outdoor events like sports, concert, etc. Those solutions run in the $15,000 range and up. And certainly feel free to contact me directly. Uh, so when you touch, uh, I want to contact CRI, very specifically mention what you're contacting about and that you want to talk to Rick Mills. Okay, any other questions? Great, thank you all very much. We appreciate the excellent questions and everybody have a great day.